Are you off to a rough start in FPL this year and looking to wildcard, or are you just looking to get ahead of the template? Either way, this video is for you. Hey everyone, Sam here, otherwise known as FPL Pricey. During the international break, I thought it'd be a good idea to take a look at what the ideal wildcard side might look like ahead of game week five. A few of us might be off to a less than positive start, or a few of you might actually just want to have a look at the ideal players to be bringing in with your free transfers over the international break. Either way, like I mentioned, this video is hopefully going to help you out and help you plan those moves for the weeks ahead as well. So without further ado, let's take a look at that wildcard side. Overall, the budget for this side is 101 million. Now, obviously that's over the original 100 million budget, but a lot of us have increased team value. And I hope that most of the things that I'm recommending here, you'll be able to afford. If not, I'm also going to bake in some alternatives to specific, more expensive players as well, just in case you don't quite have the budget for it as well. So to start with, I've gone with a goalkeeper combination of Areola and Flecken. Now they rotate really well over the next seven or eight games. As you can see on screen here, it's only game week 10 when they go up against Chelsea and Liverpool respectively that you probably haven't got the ideal pairing for that specific week. Other than that, it's pretty obvious which one you play moving forwards all the way through to game week 11 as well. So for 8.6 million, I really like the rotation. Ariola was a little bit of a surprise that he was starting for West Ham from the off. A number of West Ham fans thought he would take the gloves at some point this season, but I don't think too many were expecting him to get it straight away. So that's a really nice surprise. And it means that we've got a starting keeper at 4.1 million now. He's had that price rise, but he looks a quality keeper and West Ham are historically a pretty good defence as well. So I'm happy to have him as one of the two goalkeepers. If you wanted to be really brave and you needed to save that money, you could even downgrade Flecken to Turner, for instance, at 4 million and just have that one starting goalkeeper in Areola most weeks with Turner maybe coming in whilst he still has his starting spot for Nottingham Forest. And then you can look to move on in around game week 11 or 12. Flecken, on the other hand, has also looked really good. So I want him in my side too. He's good on the save points as well because Brentford can see quite a few long range shots and he's pretty decent at racking up the bonus points because he likes his passing too. So overall, Flecken looks really good. He's also been called up to the Netherlands team and looks like he's going to be starting this week. So keep an eye out on that. But it's important to note that he is an international starting goalkeeper now. So hopefully that means he comes with a little bit of pedigree. And those of us that were looking at his performances in pre-season, thinking he was a little bit shaky, maybe we can put that to bed pretty soon if we keep seeing what he can do on the pitch over the next few weeks. Overall, I've seen enough to think that he is going to be good in combination with Ariola, if for whatever reason, and he turns out to be an absolute bust, then Ariola is a starting keeper I'm happy to play most weeks as well. Moving on to the defence, and I have made a few changes from what my current lineup looks like, which suggests that a wild card might not be a bad idea for some of us. I think it's really important to include both a Chelsea and a Newcastle defender at this juncture, especially because of the fixtures coming, and a lot of people won't already have that Newcastle defender locked into their side, so it's an opportunity to get ahead of the template, as I hinted at earlier. I've gone with the combination of Trippier and Colwell. Now the reason for that is Trippier is historically very good on the bonus points and will get a number of set pieces to hopefully get those attacking returns in as well. A lot of people in the top tiers won't have him at the moment. I think he is still 30% owned by the game, but in terms of active and engaged managers, I don't think it's going to be anywhere near as high as that over the next few game weeks. And Newcastle's fixtures massively turn around about now. Game week five against Brentford isn't the best, but after that, they've got a great run of fixtures. So having Trippier or at least a Newcastle defender would be a pretty good thing to think about. On the other side, you've got Colwell. Now, at the moment in my side, I've got Chilwell at 5.6, 5.7 million. And I don't really like the thought of getting rid of him, but I think having Chilwell and Trippier is going to be tough for a lot of us to squeeze in both of those players, especially when there aren't too many clean sheets at the moment, just generally in FPL. So I'm not so sure about piling loads and loads of money into my defense across several players because if they're not keeping clean sheets generally across the game, then the value is probably best used elsewhere up the pitch. 
I've gone with the combination of Trippier and Colwell, but if you want to save some money and you still like Chilwell's attacking threat, then you could reverse that, go with Botman instead of Trippier, save two million there. And you could also go with Chilwell instead of Colwell. Obviously that's upgrading by 1.2, 1.3 million, but overall you still net 0.7, 0.8 million on the deal. So that's a cheaper way of unlocking both the Chelsea and the Newcastle defense. But if you're wildcarding, I think a lot of people will already have Chilwell and Botman's pretty easy to get to as well. So unless you're thinking of going with the Trippier combination, a wildcard in defence probably isn't that necessary. A doggy makes the third place in the starting 11 at the moment in defence. Burnley away is a great fixture, but also a doggy just generally looks like he's getting forward quite a lot. He has had a few price rises at the moment. He's closing in on 5 million pretty quickly. So this could be an opportunity if you're wildcarding to hop on him before the price really gets out of hand and it becomes a bit of a decision whether you go for him or Pedro Porro on the other wing who is around 5 million as well. So a doggy attacking threat, clean sheet potential maybe. Spurs don't look like the strongest team at the back. I still don't mind it. And the fixtures ahead other than the next two after Burnley are looking really, really good for the long run too. Too, so I'd have no hesitation in picking a doggy. On the bench, I've gone with a Stupinian. Now, the fixtures ahead for Brighton are not good from a defensive point of view. But as I hinted at earlier, defences at the moment just generally aren't keeping many clean sheets anywhere. And a Stupinian was in a lot of our sides from the off. So it's a, there's a good chance if you're watching this video, you've got value tied up in him. And his attacking threat is still so, so good that even against some of the more difficult fixtures, I back him to get attacking returns in 20-30% of them, which at the moment might even outweigh most of the clean sheet chances across any other alternative defences. So I still like Estupinian at what we bought him at for 5 million. If you're looking at buying him now at 5.3, I'm not so sure it's the way to go, but his attacking threat is still fantastic. And to be honest, I'm looking around defenders at the moment and I'm not seeing any that I'm massively desperate to get to that I haven't got in this wildcard draft already. So overall, I think Estupinan is still a solid pick and if you can hold him for these fixtures, you'll have him out the back end when they come into a good run in a few game weeks time as well. So overall, I think if you've got him already, you hold. And if you're on a wild card, I still wouldn't mind bringing him in now. It's just that value thing that's tied up in him that really is the kicker for me. Third on the bench in defence, I'm not expecting to start him very often. It's Branthwaite. He has gotten two 90 minutes in a row for Everton. He is highly touted. He went off on loan last season abroad and did really well. A lot of Everton fans wanted him in the starting 11. Obviously, they've got their reward now and Everton aren't keeping many clean sheets still. But I still think that he has as good a chance as any 4 million defender of getting minutes and maybe getting the odd goal from a set piece. Now, like I said, I don't think he's going to be starting in my side very often. So this is a, a low consequence position. You could easily still go with Kabor or Baldock, for instance. But I think just for the interest of debate, I've added Branthwaite here because a lot of us have already got Baldock or Kabor, for instance, or even Bayer at Burnley. And Branthwaite could be that alternative option at low ownership that you're unlikely to get that price fall out of him anytime soon. And he is getting 90 minutes now, so I don't mind him as an option. Everton, hopefully, eventually will keep a clean sheet or two. And they come into some pretty good fixtures in the next four or five as well after Arsenal at home. So I don't mind him as an option, but it is important to note that he is going to be third on my bench pretty much every single week. So I wouldn't worry too much about that position in general. Right, so let's move on to the midfield. And this is a position I took a lot of time over and I really struggled to squeeze in all of the players I really wanted to. Now, in previous videos, I've always stated that I think when you're wildcarding, a lot needs to change with your side. And Mo Salah this season seems like the most obvious reason why anyone would try to wildcard if they didn't already have him. Now, I don't have Mo Salah in my side, and because of that, I'm looking at wildcarding around game week eight or game week nine when Liverpool's fixtures really do turn and it's easy to squeeze them in on a wildcard because there are a lot of other fixtures out there that would have cheaper options in their sides that you can also accompany Salah with to make a balanced draft without having to blow the budget. With this side in game week five, I think with the midfielders, a lot of the higher price assets still have really good 
fixtures ahead of them so it's hard to sacrifice two of them to squeeze in Salah alongside a budget midfielder so for example I've still got Marcus Rashford in the side 8.9 million now and three returns so far this season within four game weeks isn't too bad but I think a few people were a little bit disappointed with the start he got off to however he is now playing back in his preferred position on the left wing and seeing a lot more joy because of that against Arsenal I thought he was fantastic and with the fixtures to come as well I think they really faced over Marcus Rashford for returns. Brighton at home as well next up, they're being targeted down that wing and Marcus Rashford could have some real joy there, so I'd struggle to get rid of him on a wild card. The other high price asset that, again, not too many people were thinking about before this week, but because of his performance in game week three, Son comes into the wild card draft and he would be one of the first names on my team sheet now if I was wild carding today. Number one would be because he is a fair differential at this point, he's still not got high ownership and he's so so explosive that he could easily bag two or three returns in any given game week due to his finishing due to the way Spurs play and Sheffield United at home even though they'll have a low block against them I still think Spurs are going to get plenty of chances Son is really good on the cutback as well as running in behind and I think Spurs will try and operate in that way Son will get a few chances and I really like him as an option and then after that in game week six and game week seven, they're going to be playing against high lines, which Son is more than happy to try and exploit anyway. So as long as he keeps playing in that centre forward role, I think he is a bit of a game breaker at 9.1 million. He is an ex-Golden Boot winner as well, let's not forget, and an ex-200 club member. So this guy has a lot of FPL pedigree. And when he's being played out of position as a forward, it's pretty hard to ignore. And if you're on a wild card, getting ahead of the template by having Son in your side from game week five will give you a real advantage and you'll be one step ahead of the crowd who don't wildcard at this point. Because of those two players in particular, Rashford and Son, I find it hard to have Salah in my draft without breaking apart my template too much. And I think that's one reason you might want to look at holding the wildcard potentially because at some point Salah is going to be in demand again and we're going to want him. And if you don't have a wildcard in your back pocket, it's going to be a lot harder to get to him without two or three transfers than it would be right now using the wildcard to get to him. Moving on to the rest of the midfield, I don't think we need to discuss Mbwemo too much. He's got great fixtures after Newcastle away from home, so I think he's an easy hold he's 90 minutes on penalties and looks razor sharp at the moment and he's getting one or two big chances every single week so I really like him as an option even if he rises above 7 million in the next few weeks I'm still going to want him in my side and if I was wildcarding today I would absolutely have him locked into my draft Saka as well I think he's going to be on the majority of penalties still and even though a few Arsenal fans aren't saying he's playing at his peak at the moment I still think he's a good enough asset at around 8.6 8.7 million to hold on a wild card and Arsenal's fixtures even though they aren't the best coming up they're still not absolutely awful and as long as you can navigate game week eight against Man City I think I'd be pretty happy to have him in my draft for the foreseeable future. Madison as well would be absolutely locked into my side he's looked absolutely fantastic so far for Spurs completely running the show Spurs like I mentioned with Son have got two promoted sides in the next four Obviously, Arsenal and Liverpool aren't fantastic fixtures, but again, Madison could easily have joy in those games. And at 7.8 million, he's still pretty accessible to get to if you're downgrading from any of the 8 million assets. If you're on a wild card, obviously, I think you've got to find a way to squeeze him in. So finally, on to the forward line. And what's a wild card without a little bit of spice in there? And that is why I've picked Darwin Nunez. Now, obviously, Haaland gets the armband. Haaland is in everyone's drafts at the moment. So I wouldn't be too worried about discussing him. But Darwin Nunez will be a standout pick that a lot of people won't be considering or at the very most will be hesitant to bring in because of his track record. Now, I think I've seen what I need to to be fairly confident in Darwin Nunez moving forwards. His pressing game isn't the best and that is why he's been in and out of the side in recent times but ever since he came on against Newcastle he has looked absolutely electric and I think Klopp is going to find it really hard not to play him in the next couple of games against sides that he probably doesn't need that pressing game quite so much as he would for some of the bigger sides so I think that probably means Darwin Nunez is in line to start the next couple and when he does start matches when he gets significant enough minutes his underlying data is so good that I'd be pretty confident of getting returns even if he's only on the pitch for 60 or 70 minutes 
minutes per match. If he can continue his run of form, I also think they'll carry on starting him even against the harder fixtures because it's going to just be really, really hard to leave him out when he's in such good form. Now, the next two, like I said, are really good. After that, it's Brighton and Spurs, both of which I think are going to be teams that Klopp is going to want to get at to try and hurry and panic at the back. And Darwin Nunez, being a bit of an agent of chaos, probably will benefit from that more than most. So I think if you're willing to take a bit of a risk, a bit of a high upside punt, Darwin Nunez could be the guy. Now, as I mentioned at the start of the video, there are alternatives and some cheaper alternatives could be the likes of Nicholas Jackson at 7 million. Now, I think with him, everyone's panicking because he's not scoring the goals at the moment. But until we've seen seven or eight, maybe even more games, I can't be highly confident that he's just a bad finisher. I think that he is getting into those positions to score goals. He is having those chances. And for me right now, that would be enough to consider him. I'm pretty happy with his performances so far. And I think the noisiness of missing chances is maybe clouding people's judgment slightly in the fact that he is getting those chances in the first place. So I think he is an alternative, but I completely understand why some people would be a bit sick of him already and maybe not be considering him in a wild card. The other option I considered is Alvarez. And because again, he's a little bit cheaper, he could be an easy alternative to Darwin. If you didn't want to take quite as much of a risk on Darwin, then Alvarez is probably that slightly easier route. And it means that maybe some of you that don't quite have the budget could afford this draft just with that slight tweak. Now, he's been in fantastic form at the moment. The underlying data is good and he's starting and getting 90 minutes in that City side week in, week out. I think with Alvarez, the one thing I'd be slightly hesitant on is the fact that Pep is liable to change that side at any given moment. And Alvarez playing out of position as the 8, the 10 or even on the wing his position could be under threat at certain times this season. I'd just be slightly cautious on that, but I'd have no problem if you wanted to go with Alvarez instead of Darwin. That's probably the safer option, but I think with any wildcard side, you want that little bit of spice. And because I really like Liverpool moving forward at the moment, I wanted to try and squeeze in a Liverpool asset in the side. Darwin Nunez was probably the easiest way of doing so. On the bench, I've gone with Archer. Pretty obvious pick. He's going to be the forward that gets the most minutes moving forwards he's going to be leading the line for Sheffield United not a great side obviously and chances will be few and far between but any 4.5 million forward that's leading the line and going to be that talisman is great value in my book he will be sat on my bench most weeks but I think overall he's not a bad option to have just in case you have a little bit of an injury crisis or maybe Sheffield United have a great home fixture some weeks and could be arguably played over your seventh attacker so there you have it. That is my wildcard draft ahead of game week five. Let me know in the comments below whether or not you're considering wildcarding. I think for me personally, the reason that I'm not looking at doing it at the moment is that a lot of the players I'd be removing aren't what I would consider to be dead wood. Now, in your side, you might have a few players that are more liable to getting rid of, and maybe you need to sort out four or five of them at a time. However, in my side at the moment, I think the players that I'd be getting rid of, even if I'm getting frustrated with them in some cases, are still pretty likely to be getting returns in the next few game weeks and they've got good fixtures to come. So for the time being, I'm still personally going to be looking at wildcarding around game week eight or game week nine. And usually I'd be wanting to make significant changes to my side. The wildcard this season, I think is going to be really important to try and squeeze in Mo Salah, which is a fundamental change to the team structure in my side, which is why I'm holding off for now until Salah's fixtures become really good. And there are some cheaper options elsewhere that I can use to balance out the side with him in it and squeezing in those two premiums. Do let me know in the comments below what you think of the wildcard side, what changes you would make, and if you're considering wildcarding this week or not. Finally, as always, I'd really appreciate it if you could leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed today's content. I've got a couple of other videos before the Game Week 5 deadline, so make sure you don't miss out on them. In the meantime, I hope you're all enjoying the international break, and I'll see you next week for my team selection video ahead of the Game Week 5 deadline.